Hi, it's Jeff Challen again. So this is the last screencast we're going to do about subversion. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the process of actually committing changes to your repository. So this is something that you should get in the habit of doing often. So remember, when using version control, the process of committing is essentially saving the state of the entire project. Um, and so, you know, again, you want to get in the habit of doing this on a regular basis. So particularly if you're about to stop working on a project for a little while, if you feel like you're at a good, like a, you've come to a good point in the project, so some tests are working and you've got some things that you want to keep, um, everything you commit to the repository will be there forever as long as you don't uh, destroy the repository in some way. Uh, and so, you know, uh, you want to get in the habit of committing frequently. I was just looking at the, I started working on the course website a few days ago, and I've already generated maybe 50 or 60 commits. So, you know, just commit on a regular basis, um, uh, certainly, you know, when the, when the deadline is approaching. So let's walk through the process of generating a commit using Eclipse. So what I've done is I've created another new project here in my Eclipse uh, Package Explorer, and I've already done the initial commit where I've added that to my Subversion repository. So if I open up the Repository Exploring dialog and go over here, you can see that I've got my another project. So, and, and that's, that's over here. Okay, so let me show you. Um, so now let's go back to the uh, Java perspective and let's make some changes to the project. So let's go, uh, let's add a, uh, let's see here. We'll do new, we'll add a class file. We'll call it another. Um, we'll give it a main method, hit finish, and open it up and write system.out.print another uh, another test project great Let me get rid of you okay save and we'll run that and it prints another test project okay great so now what's happened here is that I have my another project here locally and um, uh, what I've what's happened is that um, if I go over to the view where I can look at my Subversion repository, so there's a new file in this directory, uh, but in my Subversion repository, so if I go there, you'll see the file doesn't exist yet, and that's because I haven't committed it. This is really important. Until I commit it, the repository doesn't know about it, and so I haven't saved those changes. So let's go over back to my Java perspective. Let's go down here team and now it's giving me these options to commit okay so I go over to team and I choose commit every time you make a commit uh, you will be asked for a commit message this does and this is true no matter how you do this whether you're using a tool like Eclipse or whether you're using the command line uh, commit messages or comments are really important. This is one of the best things about version control systems is it allows you to uh, add these human readable information to your project about what's changed. So what just happened? Um, maybe I'll write added another Java and added print uh, message. So now when someone is looking at the information about this project and they see this commit for this version, what they're going to notice is that oh, hey, okay, I know what happened, right? So this is a great way to communicate with other people that are using the project or with your future self because when you come back and try to figure out what was going on in this project after a day or a week or a month, uh, the commit messages are really, really useful. It's way easier to understand what happened by looking at these commit comments than it is by reading the code. Okay, so now you'll see here that uh, Subversion has flagged this file as new and it's told me that it's going to add it to the repository. This is exactly what I want to happen. If for some reason I didn't want to add this file to the repository, I could uncheck this, but then it's telling me that nothing has changed and so I can't make a commit. All right, I'm going to check the box, hit OK. You can see down here the progress bar and I'm done. So now uh, if I go again back uh, to the... Uh, I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Uh, back to the uh, perspective here. And remember that I have to force refresh this. So I'm going to hit refresh. And now, voila, there is another .java here. And there is a version of this file now stored um, on the remote server in my repository. So that's exactly what I want it to happen. Okay, great. 
So that's the process of committing. And again, this is something that you should do on a regular basis. Now, I want to talk about doing an update, but that's a little tricky because right now I only have one way to make changes to my Subversion repository, which is through this project in Eclipse. And updates fundamentally involve taking changes that were made by somebody else to my repository um, and merging them with my own changes locally. So how am I going to accomplish this? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm in a temporary directory on my um, laptop and I'm going to use the subversion uh, client, the command line client. So this is a tool that allows me to access subversion repositories from my terminal. Okay, so what just happened? So I essentially I checked out the same repository that I'm using in Eclipse, and what you'll see is the repository has the same contents that I'm having that I'm used to in Eclipse. So if I go into this directory, uh, I've got my another folder, and inside the source directory is another .java. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly make a change to this file, um, and I'm going to instead of having it print another test project, I'm having to print my test project. And then I'm going to commit this, um, my changes to the message printed. And OK, so now it's asking me for my credentials again. And as soon as I commit it, the file is now changed on the remote server. So if I go now, let me show you how this works. One of the nice things about updates and version control systems is I get to choose when they happen. So I don't have to update my uh, code right now. And in fact, if I go look at my source code, it still says another test project and it still prints another test project. Um, if I go over to the window that allows me to browse through the Subversion repository, I will see, if I refresh the contents here, refresh, um, I will see that that file has changed on the remote repository. So this allows me to see that. Okay, so it says my test project. So that reflects the changes I just made from the command line. So now what I need to do is retrieve those changes and incorporate them into my project. So back to the Eclipse Java perspective. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this project, go down to team, and hit update. Now I can also choose to update to revision. Um, that means that would be uh, a case where there's a particular version of the repository that I want to update to. But instead what I want to do is I just want to update. Um, okay, and boom, you see what just happened. So version went to the remote server and it asked for changes. In this case it saw that the changes that I made didn't conflict with the changes that I made, uh, with anything that I made locally. I hadn't made any changes to the project, and so it just changed the file for me. So now I have the new version of the file. Now let me show you a little bit more interesting case. This is not something that you're probably going to run into, uh, but it does happen a lot in real life. So let's say that Alice decides that she wants to have this project be named after her. So she's going to call Alice's test project, and when she runs it, it, uh, it prints Alice's test project. Okay, great. So that's my local copy. But let's say in the meantime, uh, her evil partner Bob also wants it to be called his test project. And Bob uh, goes ahead and commits his changes to Subversion first. Aha! The project is mine. Okay. I'm not going to go through this little dialogue. Done. All right. So now there's a change between Alice's version of the file and Bob's version of the file. And unfortunately, these are not changes that Subversion is going to be able to automatically merge together because they're to the same line of code. So should the project be Alice's test project or should the project be Bob's test project? So let's see what happens when we go ahead and we update this. So I'm going to go down here, uh, back to the team dialog, hit update, and uh-oh one or more of the selected resources have unresolved conflicts. Clearly there is some sort of unresolved conflict between Alice and Bob. Um, maybe they need to handle that offline. Um, so I'm, now I'm over here, and what the system is doing is it's essentially showing me the differences between the files. Um, so let's see how I do this. I think what I want to do, and so now what I need to do is I need to fix this so that I choose. Um, this is what version control systems do. They essentially sort of kick the problem up to you and they say, okay, uh, it's your decision how to fix these files um, so that, uh, you know, so that the, 
so that everybody's happy. Okay. And maybe what Alice decides to do is just call this our test project. Okay. So once those uh, conflict markers are removed from the file, I can go ahead and commit my changes. Uh, we've decided to work together. Um, oh, wait, okay, I guess I need to still mark these as resolved. Uh, team, um, mark as merged. Okay, so after I make the changes to the file that indicate uh, that the conflict is resolved, I need to do this and mark it as merged. Okay, before I can commit, let's go back to this. We're going to do generate a commit. Um, we've decided to work together. Um, and I hit OK. And then once I'm done, that that is going to go down. Now, over here, Bob, when he gets a new version of the file, once he goes through the strange password dialog, this seems to happen every time, he's going to see uh, that the project has been changed, and now he and Alice are working together. So that's an example of both a commit and an update, and a case where two people are trying to both commit and update to the project at the same time, uh, both in one case where I was able to merge changes together, a subversion was able to do that, and in another case where it was not. And, and this covers pretty much the entire workflow that you are going to need to use for subversion in CS125. Now, there are lots of powerful ways to use version control systems to help you get work done, and you will find out many, many of these um, as you continue your journey in computer science. And the internet is full of extremely good resources about this. So this is kind of where we're going to stop in terms of getting you ready to use Subversion for this class. But if you would like to find out more about the features of Subversion or about other uh, version control systems like Git, um, please approach the course staff post on the forum and we will be happy to talk to you about it.